Hi folks, how are you doing? I'm Ross Minton, this is Grow Your Own Life, and as always, please like and subscribe, that'd be amazing. Well, I'm down the allotment today, it's a lovely day down here, absolutely gorgeous day, and it's been a busy few weeks actually. We've been having a bit of a mad dash at home to get certain things done in the garden. Uh, I think my front garden is near enough there now, uh, and I'm starting to really, really love it. I've um, basically collected stuff over the years for my front garden, bricks, railway sleepers, barrels, pots, and everything uh, I've got in the front garden has been free. Uh, it's um, uh, It's been got out of skips, it's been claimed from the side of the road, uh, it's come off free cycle, and pretty much every single brick or piece of wood has been free. Uh, most of the plants are plants that have been divided by family members or, or friends, some that I've had down the allotment and I've brought back, some that I've had from old properties that I, when I moved out, I put in pots and kept them. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I'm really chuffed with the fact that I've done all of that and it's cost me very little at all. Um, okay, I've bought some compost and I've bought some wildflower seeds and things like that uh, over the last few years. Uh, and people like GT Bulb Company, they've sent me uh, some amazing bulbs and they're looking absolutely fantastic. But other than that, everything is free and i just think it's it just goes to show that you can kind of do a little bit you know without spending an absolute fortune which is lovely anyway um i've been sorting out the back garden uh because there's so much that needs doing in the back garden I, i've got an old summer house that i need to put up uh i've uh, got a pizza oven that i want to build uh, i've got a shed that i need to repair i've also got to go through all my pots and i always replace the compost in my pots every year uh, simply because i don't want to get any weevils and you know maggoty things and all kinds of bugs that you know they use the pots as a safe haven and if you don't change the compost you can just encourage them to live there forever so every year i like to when the bulbs are just poking through um, i like to gently take them all out um, and I like to repot them all in new compost. And I've done that for years and years and years. And fingers crossed, touch wood, I don't really suffer with pests that bad, bar from a lily beetle. But even lily beetle, by taking the lilies out and repotting them, you help. I mean, the amount of lily beetles I found in the soil um, in the springtime, and I squished them. So obviously they're hopefully, fingers crossed, not gonna breed or there's no more about. Uh, and so just by doing that, regenerating your pots, it's, it's like, um, bit of pot spring cleaning a bit of TLC so that's been done um, I've also bought myself an impact driver yes can't wait for to get that on the go um, lockdown has taught me one thing and that is that I need to learn how to do a bit of carpentry and do a bit of bricklaying and things like that because I don't know how to do those sort of, sorts of things uh, and I've always been a person that's I'm not a prepper as such but I think there's certain skills that as a human you should know for instance, my kids from the age of about six, you know, I showed them how to light a fire. Uh, I need to double down on that to make sure they still know. Uh, you know, light a fire, use a hammer and nail, use a saw, all those kind of things. Um, I think it's really important as humans that we do. Um, and lockdown has taught me that when I can't call my father-in-law or my friends to come around and put things up for me or do a job or get their tools out, uh, I'm stuck. I'm really stuck. Um, I know I've created a few things in my garden and those of you who've been watching the videos for a few years you'll probably see things like the shed, uh, you'll see the raised beds, the chicken coops, the, the repurposing the dog runs, uh, repurp repurposing the dog runs into a chicken coop. There's been quite a few projects I've done and I'm okay, I'm okay, but what happens is I tend to um, thrash nails in basically, that's what I do. Everything I've constructed has involved a handsaw, a hammer, and a nail, and that's all well and good. And obviously for hundreds of years, that's all human beings had, but it kind of limits you if you're not that skilled in the thrashing in of nails. Uh, and I'm not that skilled in the thrashing in of nails. I mean, you'll see from my sink down the allotment, um, it's looking all right, it's looking great, but it is just scrap wood with thrashed in nails, and it'll probably only last a couple of years, and then I'm gonna have to redo it again. But now I've got the impact driver, I'm hoping that I can start using screws. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy now and probably thinking to yourself, why have you not done it in the past? One, I couldn't afford an impact driver. And then you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why didn't you just use a normal driver? Because of my medical condition, because of the fact that I, I suffer with uh, upper body strength, it, it isn't as good as it should be. I found that uh, basically leaning into a screw 
to to drive it in with a, a cross threaded and an old 18 volt drill um drill driver it just it, it wouldn't go in i'd have the screws poking out i'd thread the end and and then in the end i get frustrated at myself and then i didn't have the hand strength to then get a manual screwdriver and finish the job off and it was just an absolute nightmare hence i used to thrash nails and everything because one thing i do really well is hit a nail with a hammer i am a machine at that i can do a nail one hit you know I've, I've i've got that down that's that's in the man bank and that's saved but i need to learn how to do other things now um and to be perfectly honest it's going to be a few nice little projects isn't it really uh and i can't afford to have a carpenter come around to my house uh, i don't have the money for that i can't really afford to have a handyman come around to my house to put my summer house up so i'm gonna to have to learn to do it so the plan is for the next few weeks uh next few weeks months even is to learn to use my drill <laughs> and i'm going to start with repairing a cold frame that i've got which again was another free cycle find um and it's a great cold flip frame i've had it for uh, two years um but it's it's getting to the point now where if i don't fix it now i'm going to lose it forever uh, some of the bits are rotten some of the bits are a bit you know they, they, they could do with staining and tarting up a bit and cleaning down and if it has another winter, I know it's just going to be rotten and it won't be able to be saved. So the plan is to do that up first. That'll give me some grounding. If I can repair a coal frame, I can build a summer house. That's my Ross logic. I've been watching loads of YouTube videos. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this summer I will finally have my summer house up. Yay! And I'm planning on doing it pretty much all on my own. Um, and i've been watching youtube videos about how you brace walls so you cut your hands free so you can put the screws in and things like that and it it looks quite simple to be fair i'm sure it's not and i'm sure i'm going to get massively frustrated but i've got to try it and i think it'll be a handy skill to have I'm 37 years old uh, and i could really l do with learning how to do these basic carpentry things so that's the plan but other than that the allotment's been great the allotment's been fantastic um I've been taking a lot of old pots from the garden down uh, to the allotment. Uh, the pots that I've had for years, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just they look a bit scrappy now and a bit messy and, you know, where the sun's faded them. And I'd quite like to have some nice pots in my garden when I can afford it. I'm not saying I'm going to buy them. I might even make some. Uh, but I'm going to have a scout round on eBay and see if I can find any nice pots that are going cheap. Uh, ones that match might be quite nice because none of my pots match at the moment. But those pots are going to be awesome. They're going to have potatoes in and carrots in and everything else. So they'll be fantastic. So it's kind of been a case of dropping things off at the allotment uh, and also getting seeds in. Um, I've got so many seeds in now. Um, it's uh, My sunflowers are po even poking up now. And I only sowed them about five days ago. An old packet of seeds, which th they were about two years out of date. And I think I've got about 100% germination rate. I looked at the seed tray today and I think every single one was poking up. Uh, and they, they've been in a few days if that so fingers crossed this should be the start of a really good spring i hope we don't get a last last minute cold snap i don't plan on putting anything outside just yet uh, but everything in the greenhouse is going really good but obviously as you know in the uk we can have snow in may so we can wake up you know over easter over may time and we can wake up to snow it doesn't always happen it can be a freak occurrence but you know we can also get heavy frosts well into late april mid-may so, um, and although things are in the greenhouse, it can affect them. I had it, remember last year with my tomatoes, uh, we had a late frost in May and it really set back some, it actually killed a couple of tomatoes and it set some back uh, quite a lot. I had to uh, cut some of the tips out and obviously they were pretty much done for bar from a few side shoots. So hopefully everything will be fine. We're still doing the food waste box. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're still going to uh, a local uh, organiser called Taste, Taste Not Waste uh, and we pay £10 for a food waste box and that's pretty much most of the food we eat. I'm not going to say we're exclusively uh, on the food waste. If you watch my Instagram, you'll see that we're not. Um, I mean, we treat ourselves once a week. We have a takeaway or something and this week we had fish and chips. <laughs> I haven't had fish and chips for ages and I tell you what, it was so nice. And I imagine that if you're eating junk food and fish and chips all the time, you don't realise how nice it is. But we've been eating really well, home-cooked meals, vegetables, uh, you know, meats from the farm, all kinds of stuff like that. The food wasting, I've had smoked salmon, I've had 
um, katsu curry fish cakes. Uh, we've we made homemade doner kebabs. We've made loads of stuff, and it's been absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but having those fish and chips through the night was mm, magnifique. Oh, it was beautiful. It was oh, it was decadent. And I, and some of you are going to laugh, but oh, I loved every single mouthful of that fish and chips, and I could have ate it again. And Fat Ross would have done. <laughs> anyway anyway guys i hope you've been keeping well i hope you're all okay um this vlog is uh hopefully uh has a bit more detail to it than the last one uh, but as always it's just about filming and editing footage and stuff and also carrying on doing the jobs that i'm doing uh i've managed to ping up a load of videos lately a load of videos on how i do the certain things and how i sew certain things uh, and so hopefully they should hit that youtube algorithm and uh, make me a few pennies that I can spend down the allotment on seeds and plants and everything else. Um, but anyway, everything's going good. Um, everything's going really cool at the moment. And uh, I'm just, look at this sunshine. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of the car now and I'm going to do some work. So until next time, folks, take care. Speak soon.